Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how you can accelerate your growth in 2019 by acquiring more doctor clients. I'm Dr. Vicki Rackner, your host. I leverage my experience as a practicing surgeon, clinical faculty at the University of Washington School of Medicine, and serial entrepreneur to help financial services professionals take the fastest, easiest, and most direct path to success in the medical market. Well, as 2019 kicks off, my guess is that you are wondering, how are you going to achieve your business goals? In this tutorial, you're going to understand the five trends in 2019 that significantly impact your ability to acquire doctor clients. You'll understand the five practices of successful financial advisors and take away some tools to help you gain clarity about what you would like to do in 2019 and five ways that I can help. I've delivered two webinars. One is Getting Doctors to Do Business with You that talks about the 10 laws of physician engagement. I taped another one, How to Get Knee to Knee with More Doctor Prospects. Really today, what we're gonna talk about is what's new in 2019 and how can you use this information for your benefit. Why is this tutorial different? Well, you'll get insider secrets about the world of medicine from a physician. You'll get an outsider's perspective. I'm the voice of your prospect. Further, our intentions align. Both of us are interested in improving the condition of doctors. And in fact, I've got another brand, Thriving Doctors. So the ideas that I'm giving you are ideas that have been incorporated into my own business plan. Okay, why is all of this important to you right now? Well, most marketing advice, especially to doctors, is dead wrong. Doctors are wired differently than business-minded people. All right, next, physicians are immune to conventional marketing messages. Physicians have acute financial pain, and you can stand out by offering true leadership. Are you in the right place? Well, this tutorial is for you. If you're a veteran in the medical market, you're also in the right place if you want to jump right into the medical market and avoid the steep learning curve, or you see the opportunities in the medical market and you're wondering, how can I really leverage those? This tutorial is not for you. If you're looking for a get-rich-quick scheme, Doctors work very hard to be in a position to deliver care, and so too the advisors who are successful in the medical market invest in smart work. This is not the right tutorial for you if you want a do-nothing campaign. I will show you what to do, but it's this is not about just getting leads delivered to your inbox, although wouldn't it be great if that could happen? And I also find that if you lack a spirit of service, Chances are good that you'll do much better in a different market. In the spirit of full disclosure, I've learned most of my lessons the hard way. I was challenged when I left the world of medicine and entered the world of business. I've invested about as much in my marketing and sales education as I have in medical school. I've tried things that haven't worked. And while I'm going to share with you ideas that have helped advisor increase their assets under management by tens of millions of dollars in 2018, I do not know you or your work habits. So unfortunately, I cannot promise any results. So let's start digging in and we'll start with the five trends in 2019. I have been working with financial advisors for about a decade now. I see unprecedented opportunities in the medical market because of a number of forces that are converging. The first force is the new 2018 tax law. Now, as you know, the intention of the tax law is to help the United States be more competitive in our global economy by reducing the corporate tax rate. So there will be people who will benefit from this new tax rate, and there will be a few people who will be harmed. That includes doctors who earn over $315,000 a year. Now, as you recall, Taxes are a doctor's biggest lifetime expense. Talking about taxes has already worked, but now with this new tax law, I really recommend that you focus on that. This is probably the best marketing message 
that I could offer right now. So you might already know what some advanced tax strategies are. If you do not, I would invite you to get a tax strategist on your team. If you're looking for a recommendation, I would be more than happy to give one to you. Second, doctors are still dealing with falling reimbursements and rising expenses and costly regulatory changes. So doctors say things like, I feel like I've got to go faster and faster on the hamster wheel to just avoid getting behind. This is leading to the third trend, which is increasing physician and dentist dissatisfaction. We're seeing epidemic rates of burnouts. One of the most frequently asked questions is, how can I speed up my retirement? This is just too much for me. To paraphrase Tolstoy, all happy doctors are happy in the same way, but unhappy doctors are unhappy in different ways. We all want to be in our sweet spot where everything is working. On the X horizontal axis, we have personal and professional satisfaction on a scale of minus five to plus five. On the Y axis, we have financial satisfaction. So different groups of doctors are unhappy for different reasons. If we go down to the lower right-hand corner, residents and those in their early phases of their career have high levels of professional satisfaction. However, they may be burdened with hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical school debt. So you can help them by showing them how they can achieve wealth. So if you're working with residents, why not charge a small fee for a plan to help doctors manage their medical school debt. How about partnering with a contract lawyer and offer to do a contract review for residents or remind residents that this is the right time to buy into same occupation disability insurance to lock into those lower rates. In the lower left-hand corner, we have those doctors who were burned out. When doctors are asked what's the cause of the burnout, it quite often has to do with finances. When they're asked what would need to happen in order to resolve your burnout, it has to do with finances. So maybe you specifically wanna reach out to doctors who were burned out and offer them different solutions in addition to the financial plan. Just a couple of months ago, I gave a talk to a couple hundred physicians about what to do when you hang up the white coat. In the upper left-hand corner, there are doctors who have retired, they have plenty of wealth, but their life is missing something. I think of Walter White in Breaking Bad. You know, he had literally millions of dollars buried in the desert, but he had a bankrupt personal life. Are there things that you could do with wealthy retired physicians to help them with legacy planning? The fourth major hurdle that you've always had to deal with but is getting more exacerbated is the high barrier to entry. It's getting more and more difficult to engage doctors. I remember early on when I was working with advisors, somebody told me that what he used to do is just sit in the waiting room of MD Anderson and follow doctors back to their offices and get new doctor clients that way. Well, clearly that's not happening. You're dealing with a very, very tough gatekeeper. And more and more institutions are closing their doors to people who basically wanna sell things to doctors. So here's one of my speaking contracts. And you'll see that you have to declare conflicts of interest or commercial interests or financial relationships. And quite often because you monetize your ability to help doctors build wealth, doors will be closed to you. And last, doctors are getting social. I had mostly been targeting my own personal social media activity on LinkedIn, but I have come to discover a very active physician community on Facebook. For example, here's a group called Physician Side Gigs with almost 30,000 members. This is a closed group, so they ask you to tell them when you graduated from medical school. They verify you're really a doctor before you're let in. But interestingly enough, 
there are lots of queries about financial issues. And here's another example of the most influential person in a doctor's life is another doctor. A lot of times when these kinds of questions are asked, some doctor will say, hey, why are you getting your financial advice from us? Go see my CPA, go see my own financial advisor. Here's a name. Let's talk about the five practices of successful advisors. I'm humbled and honored to be able to work with some very successful advisors. In fact, I had a conversation this year I will never forget. One of my private coaching clients said, Vicki, we're going to have to back off on the marketing. I simply cannot manage all of the new doctors who are calling my office and who want to be my clients. And after laughing a little bit, we did make a plan to bring in a junior resident so we could sort of capture this interest. But this advisor has achieved what I call escape velocity. Now, you know that if you wanna launch a rocket, it has to have enough momentum to overcome the gravitational force that's keeping it to the earth. But once it overcomes that barrier, it's clear sailing. Well, so too, there are investments that you need to make to become the go-to expert among targeted groups of doctors. But the reason that that pays off is exactly the situation that I just told you about. Once you become established as a go-to advisor, doctors in that community wouldn't dream of working with anybody except you. So how did he and others achieve escape velocity? Well, here are the five practices. First, they harness the power of the story. I'm working with a private coaching client who's actually launching a medical billing business. And you should know this because on average, doctors in private practice walk away from about 30% of their revenue when they don't follow up on rejected claims. Well, this woman was having a hard time breaking in and capturing the attention of doctors. So I asked her, what made you go into this business? And she told me her story. She had been a math professor, and at age 40, this perfectly fit, healthy woman had a heart attack. She got a renewed appreciation for what it is that doctors do, and now she wants to give back to doctors. I said to her, why don't you tell that story? She wasn't sure, but she screwed up her courage and did it. So she had her third meeting with a doctor and she told him the story. And she said she could see a physical shift in him. Suddenly he wasn't as guarded. He was interested in hearing what she had to say because she had been authentic. She had shared her true story. So what's your story? Why is it that you're working in financial services? Why is it that you're working with doctors? I recommend that you hone this story and tell it frequently. Next, harness the power of peers and influencers. You know that the most influential person in a doctor's life is another doctor. I did two breakthrough things this year. The first is I let financial advisors write a custom forward to the myth of the rich doctor. But the second breakthrough thing I did was I wrote letters of introduction that advisors could send out under my physical address. So if you sent a letter to a doctor, chances are pretty good it winds up in the circular file. But no gatekeeper is going to keep a doctor from getting a letter from another doctor. So how can you harness your doctor peers and influencers? Could you put a doctor on your advisory board? When you're speaking, could you get a doctor to make an introduction? Could you cultivate this culture of introductions? This is powerful, powerful medicine, and I hope that you harness it. Remember, doctors behave like tropical fish. They tend to congregate together and move together under the same direction. Think about that Facebook group that I just mentioned where doctors are asking other doctors. Third, you want to harness 
the power of place. It's very, very difficult to get in front of single doctor prospects. A much better use of your time is to go where doctors already gather, either physically or um, intellectually. One of the most underutilized resource are medical meetings. Large numbers of doctors regularly go to medical meetings. And when I'm talking about large numbers, take a look at number seven, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. 32,000 people gather in a city once a year. This is a great opportunity for you. Let's say, for example, you give dinner meetings. Well, what if you found out where the next meeting of the orthopedic surgeons was? Maybe it's in San Diego, uh, maybe it's in San Francisco or Orlando. You could purchase lists of local orthopedic surgeons and invite them to a breakfast event at a hotel down the street from the convention center. So the doctors are already there, they're there to learn, they've handed off their patients and they would be receptive to coming to a breakfast event like this. I've also this year had the experience of my clients getting vendor booths at these meetings and then my coming and doing a book signing. In fact, one meeting organizer even offered to promote the book signing in the program. So I highly recommend that you take a look and see if there's any role that medical meetings can play in your 2019 marketing campaigns. Doctors are also gathering virtually. They used to have conversations in the surgeon's lounge and the doctor's dining room. Now more and more of them are having these conversations online. And if the Harvard Medical School is offering a course about social media, you know that this is something important. So you might wanna find out where are your doctors engaging in their conversations? The next practice is harnessing the power of perseverance. Now, it would be just terrific if you could just sit down with a doctor, let them know what your value is, and the doctor pulls out a checkbook. Unfortunately, we know that that is not the case. We know that the general doctor is gonna have to be exposed to your marketing message between seven and 10 times before they actually convert. So it's tough to make seven phone calls and hear no seven times, but you do have the opportunity to regularly deliver value. And so I highly recommend that you have a sign up box on your webpage and that you deliver digital content on a regular basis, maybe once a month. I think that probably the best and most compelling digital marketing material that you can send them are a series of your videos answering doctors frequently asked questions. You can certainly curate and distribute other people's content, but what do you really want to do? You want the doctor to build a relationship with you. And this is a great way of making it happen. Now, if you do this, I very much encourage you to talk about the questions that doctors are asking, not the questions that you wished doctors would ask. And last, the most successful advisors harness the power of expert positioning. Doctors do not want to work with salespeople. They do not want to work with vendors. As you work with doctors, you are going to be one of a handful of people who knows a physician or dentist's financial truth. They will treat you as a peer. They want to work with experts. And what I believe is that the ultimate demonstration of your expert status is writing a book. What's the catch? Well, books are hard to write. So I do make available the opportunity to write a forward and afterward to my books. The Myth of the Rich Doctor somehow hit a nerve and advisors who have done this this year have found that this book really opens doors for them. We've been talking about successful advisors, but what about you? 
Now, you have some hopes and dreams for 2019. You have reasons that you want to achieve the business success you've set forth. What is your plan to get there? So I'd like to talk about some ways that support strong business growth. The most important point to understand is that we are in a new selling climate. In the old paradigm of selling, you would go and find doctors, you would qualify these doctors. In the new paradigm though, doctors find you. They qualify you. So the core question you want to answer is, how are you going to be found amid all of the noise? Doctors talk about evidence-based medicine. What is that? Doctors are asking for objective proof that things work, and that's evidence-based medicine. And as you think about 2019, I encourage you to practice evidence-based marketing. Just as you help your clients remove emotion from their investing choices, so too evidence-based marketing helps you remove the emotion from your marketing campaigns that you launch. It's very easy to get caught up in activity. A friend of mine is a New York Times bestselling author, and I went to her blog and was just delighted to see this post that says, I'm very pleased to report that Nobody Albums has been a huge success in every respect, except for the one in which people buy it. In 2019, how about if you get very, very focused and decide what your metrics for success are? I recommend that the two endpoints that you're looking at are, first of all, money in your bank account, and second of all, joy in doing this work. There are certain things that are easier and more fun for you to do than others. Then you need little landmarks to see how well you're moving there. And what will those be for you? Some of them might be the number of prospects on your list, the rate at which your list grows, the number of power partners and the number of introductions that you get from them, the number of views you get from a post or an article, the number of clients, and maybe the conversion to appointments. And here are three questions that I think will help you get there. First, what questions do doctors ask? Now, I know that you think that they should be asking about the best investments or retirement planning, but unfortunately, that's not what doctors enter into the Google search bar. Find out what questions they're really asking, because if you can answer those questions, if you've got web pages that have that on them, if you can title your articles or videos with these keywords, you increase your chances of being found. Second, where are doctors having conversations? You want to be there. So are they having them in person? at meetings? Are they on social media? And if so, which social media platform? You want to be where your target doctor clients are. And then how can you join the conversation? And as always, I'm going to strongly encourage you to build relationships by delivering value. Always have something to give away. Now, if you've ever trained a puppy to come, you know what you do, you put the puppy on a sit and then you issue the command. And if the puppy doesn't come, the natural tendency is to chase after the puppy. And what happens? Well, the puppy thinks that this is a game and runs away from you. The exact same thing happens when you try to engage doctors in conversation. So do what smart dog trainers do. Offer yummy treats when they come to you. So always have something great to give away. The key to success with digital marketing is having the right keywords. So there are tools to research what keywords are best. I will be creating some videos that will show you how to do this and you'll hear about those. But again, if Harvard's talking about social media, 2019 might be your year 
to finally jump into social media. So I hope that those ideas have been helpful. I sort of feel a duty to let you know how I might be able to assist you in your efforts to acquire more doctor clients. If you're not really interested in a promotional message, I thank you for your time and your effort, and I hope that you found value in this. I will tell you that I wake up pretty much every morning and ask myself, what can I do today to help financial advisors acquire more doctor clients? I listen to the kinds of things that advisors tell me that they want. So over the decade, I've put together lots and lots of services and tools to help financial advisors. And very quickly, here's five of them. The first are coaching services. Now, what does a coach do? They help you achieve higher levels of performance. And that's exactly what I'd like for you. So let me give you an example about where coaching comes in handy. So I have a client who had a medical condition he is very grateful to his doctors, and now he wants to work with doctors. He's a former golf pro, and he belongs to a resort, and there are doctors who play there. So I recommended that he send a note to the doctors just telling his story. You know, I had a medical condition. I'm fine now. I have renewed appreciation for doctors. May I give back by inviting you to a game of golf? And I'd be happy to share a pointer or two that I know from my experience as a golf pro. And then once he was out on the golf course, he could talk about his business. So he changed the wording of the invitation and he introduced himself. He told them what he did for doctors. And guess what happened? One of the doctors who got it was on the board. There was a formal complaint against him for solicitation. So I wish that he would have shown me the letter that he was planning on sending before he actually went out, but it kind of backfired on him. And now we're doing reputation management. We'll turn this thing around. Subtle little things can make a huge difference. So having somebody at your side who really understands how a message is going to be received, not by a suit like you, but by a white coat like me, can really help you stay out of trouble and craft messages that are going to resonate. So I offer all sorts of coaching packages. I also offer strategic and tactical support. And if you're looking for a starting place, the best place is the Cracking the Physician Code course. There's a home study course, there's a live web-based course, usually with about 10 people, and then there is a live boot camp where we spend two and a half days together. I also offer these yummy treats, these value delivery vehicles. Probably the best are my books that you can co-brand. The Nine Money Mistakes Doctors Make is about to come out. You are welcome to co-brand that by writing a forward and afterward. In addition, this package is going to come with nine videos. So one video for each of the nine mistakes. With this package, I'd be happy to give you the script so that you can record them yourself. You can introduce me and I can deliver it, or I could potentially interview you. Books are the ultimate expert positioning, but I've also got articles, I've got videos, I've got way to help you with expert positioning packages too. So I create lots of content for my Thriving Doctors brand. You have access to all of them, including this book about how to get more patients starting today. I can open up the red velvet curtain for you by making introductions. So this year, for the first time, I wrote a letter of introduction, peer-to-peer, -peer, introducing the professional financial advisor. This worked very, very well. In addition, let's say you're giving a seminar. I've delivered the invitation for these seminars. I'm also available to speak and either with you or solo and then promote you from the platform. 
I recommend that even if you don't use this service, you think about a doctor that you can get on your team to do this with you because this has just had such great results. And then last, there are some high driving advisors who just want to be able to get some help and take a really fast track to success. So for them, I've created what I call the Power Prospecting Package. So this is in essence where I join your team and we really focus on getting you some fast results. So you get a physician partner. We co-create high value content. You get a step-by-step -step marketing plan and my help with execution. You move quickly and you get exclusivity. So I'll only work with one advisor in a geographic area. So let me give you a case study here. Michael was interested in getting some fast results. He was born in Lebanon and when the war came, his family finances were ruined. His plan to go to medical school was put on hold. He came to the United States pretty much doing anything he could to earn income. So he was relatively new to financial services. Further, he had just moved. So he was new to town, didn't know a lot of people and had no local network. What are the positive things about him? Well, he understood Lebanese doctors because he was born in Lebanon. He spoke five languages. He already worked with police officers and teachers. So he'd had some experience. He was a member of the Catholic church. His brother-in-law was a doctor and his niece, unfortunately, was in need of a bone marrow transplant. So how do you put this all together and go from zero to 60 in uh, 30 seconds? Well, I started looking around to find good fishing holes for him. I found the American Lebanese Medical Association. I found a National Arab American Medical Association. Since this person was a very religious person, I also found um, a Mission Doctors Association. I went on ZocTalk to try to identify doctors who spoke Arabic. You know, wouldn't a doctor look differently if the email were sent in Arabic? And I actually found a meeting of nurse anesthetists who were a very, very good fit temperamentally they're much like police officers and teachers. They're really nice people. They can actually earn more income than primary care doctors. So I found a meeting and we put an entire plan together that I think, as you can see, really reflects who he is. And that's the intention. Find a plan that works well for you. So you get a physician partner. You can say, I work with Dr. Vicki Rackner. You can list me as a project partner on your website. You can put your profile on my targeting doctor site and you will get appropriate introductions. So let me show you exactly how that might look. I have joined a private Facebook group for moms of college bound kids. Now this is a closed group. So again, you have to prove that you're a doctor in order to get in the group. Well, there was a woman who announced that her son had gotten into his first choice school, but she didn't know how she was gonna pay for it and she asked for some help. So I consulted with one of my own clients who does college planning and I said, is there anything that you can do to help her? He said, of course, feel welcome to make the introduction. So I did, her response, I'd love your financial advisor's information. We have no money. And when doctors say that, it's generally not true, but are open to any suggestions, creativity. Thank you for having this conversation on our behalf above and beyond and much appreciated. So if we're working together, this is the kind of introduction I'd be happy to make for you. Let's take a look at some of the other posts on the physician side gigs. Okay, you probably know about incorporation. You probably know how to finance a practice buy-in. You can give advice about taxable accounts. We're gonna 
figure out what your path to success is and then execute it. So your major job is going to be relationship building, which you're an expert at anyway. You know that relationships are more profitable than assets under management. So this power prospecting program is good for you if you're a veteran in the medical market and you just want to kick it up to the next level this year. You want to jump in and avoid the learning curve. You really want to take a quick accelerated path to success. You want to quickly position yourself as the go-to expert. So basically, I've included everything that I think would be helpful for you to achieve success in the medical market. Well, what's the investment? Well, I thought a lot about this and I asked myself, well, what's the value of a single physician client to you? What's the value of being perceived as a physician's partner? What's the value of marketing material that physicians want or of getting your phone calls returned? What's the value of getting the attention of the executive director and avoiding campaigns that don't work? So everything that you are seeing here has worked. I engage in evidence-based marketing. Well, if I add up all of the elements that you can certainly get a la carte, this is a total investment of $12,000. Now, I know that I could charge high six figures for this practice because I know the value that this offers. However, I'm also here in the spirit of service to help you. Instead of the 12,650, you see what the investment is. Now, before you get excited, I just wanna say I can only accept a limited number of participants and I'll only work with one advisor in each area. So before you get excited, please drop me a note at Dr. Vicky at Targeting Doctors D-R-V-I-C-K-I at Targeting Doctors, and just see if your city is even available before you learn more. With all of my products and services, you are protected by a money-back guarantee. If you get started and it's not for you, if I don't fulfill the expectations that you have, you will get your money back, no questions asked. So you assume absolutely no risk. The risk is on me. So let me ask you again, what is your dream? Where are you hoping to get to in 2019? I wish you all the best in achieving these career goals. Thank you so much for your time and your effort. Let me know how I can support your success in the medical market. Bye-bye.